dear students uh, today uh, in portrait cultivation and second agriculture course today we are going to discuss uh, on greenhouse drying that is lecture number 11 we will discuss the various uh, various uh, uh, components of the greenhouse drying before uh, what is drying you know that the in india a lot of uh, uh, we grow a lot of crops and after harvesting it has a high moisture content so normally even paddy each after harvesting normally you go for drying and for drying different methods are there so basically due to high moisture content of the aculture fresh aculture produce it get spoiled okay so basically drying is the process of removal of moisture content at the safe level so that can it can be stored or further processed okay and after drying certainly it, it it's a, a, a product become a smaller lighter and the volume will be also less and drying is one of the oldest and easiest method for food preservation there are various methods of food, food preservations okay but in that drying is one of the you can say oldest method and that that uh, and easiest you can say that the, that is very common method for uh, extending the shelf life of fresh produce what is the principle basically uh, whenever uh, as i told that the after harvesting of you take the any cereals crops or pulses or maybe mainly in fruit vegetables the major challenge is in fruit vegetables because it has the high amount of moisture so due to the micro organism or enzymatic activity food get spoiled okay and so by reducing the moisture content the the microbial activity and the enzymatic activity slows down and the the shelf life of the produce increases so basically what are doing in drying basically we are depending upon the types of food product and the purpose of the dried product you remove the moisture content from let it be from 90 percent to 12 percent 10 percent depending on how much time for which purpose you are drying and for how much time you have to store the fresh produce so depending upon the produce which type of produce you are talking then the the yeah, you know that the, the the process of drying in the process of drying it basically it is the process of heat and mass transfer it is clear from the picture you can see that basically we are you are you are giving the heat to the food okay and by giving the, that heat the the produce the produce lose out the moisture okay so basically you are transferring the heat to the produce to, to which we, we want to dry and the the food product lose the moisture the basic reason is the vapor pressure difference vapor pressure difference between the air and the vapor pressure difference at the food surface due to that gradient creates and it lose the moisture so basically it is the process of so here the heat transfer and mass transfer phenomena is involved so it is very interesting uh, before going for drying we go for pre-treatments and this is the flow chart you can see that the first we select the produce and we do normally we go for you can say grading or maybe sorting sorting means you will remove the damaged product and after that you go for cleaning in cleaning also they have normally water water washing is there apart from that different type of sanitizers are there you use the different type of sanitizers to uh, to reduce the bacterial load on the surface after that you go for peeling slicing then after that various types of pre-treatments are there and physical methods chemical methods are there basically so in that the uh, so we go for treatment then after that we go for drying and after that drying we go for packaging depending on which type of product you are talking suppose it, it, if it is a milk powder the packaging requirement will be different if it is tomato uh, dehydrated tomato in that case it will be different so depending on which type of product you are talking the packaging requirement will be different and certainly it, it will be stored depending upon the it will be stored and finally it will transport it to the destination maybe retail shop or maybe some further processing there are various factors that affect the drying the factor listed here are all the factors that related to greenhouse dry mainly almost you can say the major factors are same in conventional drying but the here we have listed the you can say the uh, various important factor that affect the your greenhouse drying in that the external parameter means the solar radiation okay solar radiation is important how much solar radiation you are getting at that place temperature temperature is one of the important vital uh, issue and then apart from, uh, apart from that relative humidity is very important because depending upon relative humidity it means it shows that how much moisture 
air is holding so it will affect your drying drying process means the um, moisture removal capacity of air depends upon one of the rh is very important factor and then apart from that air velocity is there air velocity also plays very important role apart from that internal parameter means the types of product initial moisture content of food product types of crops size which size you are talking suppose that if you are taking the uh, potato okay uh, yeah, or you can say um, guava or anything so slice up uh, because the if the surface area will change so thickness will change surface area will change then crop absorbity because then solar radiation is coming so depending on which type of product it is it, it will affect its, its uh, affect its, its absorbity we already have discussed that when sunlight is coming at in any place three things happens absorption transmission or reflection okay so depending on which type of product depending on type of product your crop absorbity will change and certainly the exposed surface area surface area because if the surface area is more the, so drying will be more faster this is the drying rate curve with the time you can see from this curve that the it shows the on on the y axis it is drying rate or temperature on x axis it is the drying uh, uh, different uh, time is there so you can see the from the picture from origin to a it is the initial period means the when we start the drying at that time you can see from the curve the drying is very fast after that it becomes constant means the uh, you can say that a constant rate drying period and then depend and then falling rate falling rate rate drying basically depending on which type of product you are talking it, sometimes the uh, sometimes the all the three phenomena is not there and initially because initially the food food, food product has very high moisture content so it will uh, free moisture content is very high so your initial dry, uh, drying con, drying rate will be faster after that so, so after some time it become constant okay and then after that it starts falling miss the uh, miss the suppose that in one hour in initially we have removed uh, x amount of moisture after some time it becomes constant and, and in falling rate it decreases with time so you can see that the, as the dying progress the moisture content of the product decreases and the certainly because the as the moisture content in the product uh, reduces the product temperatures of the produce that you are drying it increases it, it is clear from the picture you can see there are various methods of drying we have classified into conventional drying and solar drying in conventional tray drying vacuum tray drying freeze drying there are various methods are there some of the uh, they may have listed here tray drying is very common one uh, basically in, con in industry normally here what you do uh, 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 use the uh, use the conventional energy source to heat the air and after heating the air you pass through the dryer okay and then in, in tray the produce is is kept and the hot air is passed through the tray uh, uh, through the that produce so basically heater is there and then you can say fan is there exhaust fan that 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 moves the air through over the tray okay and then vacuum tray drying in all the drying process basically what you want you want the temperature should be low if the temperature will be high depending on which type of product you are talking it will it will affect your quality so depending upon which type of product and what is the final price you will able to get with the time people have working on various types of dryers combination combination of drying techniques and our ultimate aim is that our drying cost should be less okay and the drying cost should be less and the quality should be maintained okay and because drying cost is very important because what price you are getting after selling the produce and after that solar drying we have the uh, in solar drying we can classify as open sun drying and greenhouse drying I told in solar drying normally you can classify as a open sun drying and greenhouse drying. So, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of conventional drying? In advantage, you, you can go for it is continuous process or it, or maybe batch process, and it, it it do not depends upon the outside environment. Okay, and you can we can do uh, around the year. Okay, means the. I, I, throughout the year we can do and capacity is higher in uh, is normally high depending upon the which type of uh, how much capacity we need we can go for as much higher capacity we need and apart from that the operating condition means the all the drying parameter that affect the drying we can control easily in the conventional drying process but the disadvantage there are various disadvantages are there but the, some of them i have listed here high cost because you are because you are going two things are there one is the initial cost 
to put the dryer and then the operating cost means the energy cost is there apart from that man uh, other costs are there in operating their various costs are there so high cost of investment because uh, you have to put the dryer then apart from that energy consumption as i told and high maintenance cost is it is are the some of the disadvantage of your conventional drying process what is solar drying basically it is the you can say the it is a, a device used for purpose of solar drying basically when whenever you are using any any chamber or any drying chamber to dry the product using the solar energy that is your solar dryer and the, you know that the throughout the india government of india is giving a lot of emphasis on the solar energy okay so basically because that is totally free and uh, it is clean source okay and the must reliable ab abundant inexhaustible because it is renewable source right so government of india is giving a lot of emphasis of solar energy in the field of a culture apart from that your solar drying solar pump and so many activity we we can do through the uh, solar energy using the solar energy so this is the classification of, of solar drying technique as i told uh, basic classification is open sun drying and greenhouse drying in greenhouse drying also we have the two types passive solar drying and active solar drying and each have uh, passive solar drying can be direct indirect uh, indirect mode direct mode indirect mode or mixed mode and same is the case with the active active can be direct or indirect or mixed mode so one by one we will discuss later on so what is open sun drying this is very common time this is the way traditional oldest and common traditional method you have you, you have seen at various places people used to use uh, the solar uh, so, uh, open sun drying for dehydrate, dehydrating or drying the food product okay like the you have seen the paddy after washing the wheat or so many tomato or in fees people used to this is if you if you visit the villages still people are using this is very one of the co co common method of the drying so here you can see that the uh, how it operates the all the your short wavelength is coming already we have discussed in earlier classes also and long wavelength is uh, going so basically the solar radiation is coming and on the floor your crop has been put okay food product that you, which you, you want to dry and due to direct radiation product is heated apart from that convec convection is uh, occurring and apart from that here you, depending upon the of, of the surface your conduction loss is there so this is one of the common method and people still are using the uh, in various parts of india people are using the uh, open sun drying technique but the, the, there are various advantage of solar drying technique uh, open sun drying the there is because the, here you are in, not using any in, not using any fuel or mechanical energy or because the operation is very simple inexpensive as i told that the solar energy is free but the problem is there are various disadvantage because the process because it depends upon the natural condition so throughout the year your solar radiation and all the parameters that affect the drying changes so this process is uh, slow, slow drying process apart from that because you, you are you are drying in the open field so a lot of dust accumulate dust contamination insect infestation various problems are there so what what i want to say the dehydrated product is not so hygienic apart from that uh, the it did completely depend dependent on weather you know that throughout the year it may be rain sometime high wind speed so uh, operating the your open sun drying condition is little bit difficult so what is greenhouse dryer already we have discussed uh, what is the greenhouse effect so basically all the greenhouse dryer operate on the principle of greenhouse effect all the solar dryers act on the, as i told you know what is greenhouse effect due to the confinement effect and apart from that because the short wave is coming and that is part, that due to the nature of your cladding material the long wave do not go out from the your structure so due to both the region confinement and the your less transparency of uh, your radiation is long wave is not passing the temperature inside the your uh, your structure increases and that can be helpful to your solar drying process so already we are in earlier classes we have discussed this is the basic phenomena because your sunlight we have divided uv ray photoactive radiation and near infrared is coming and after that as i told the short wave is converting after touching the surface or food material when it is it it goes out it due to the nature of your cladding material it, it it do not go outside the structure so due to confinement and both two effect your temperature inside the structure will be normally between 5 to 15 depending upon which type of structure what is open field condition there are so many factors are there so normally 
throughout the year inside the temperature will be higher than the your open field condition there are various uh, uh, advantages of greenhouse gas it is faster than because the temperature is high high so normally the open it will be faster than open open sun drying and because the because drying rate is fast so spoilage will less or more efficient than your open sun drying hygienic as i told because because it is do not depend upon the vagaries of weather high wind speed rainfall or some okay so the dry product inside the your solar dryer is more hygienic in comparison to open sun drying and but the limitation of solar drying is there that it is depends upon your as i told that the solar radiation and other factors are its condition so uh, 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 normally people are using in a small capacity okay they are this is one of the disadvantage and as i told it depends upon open field climate what is outside climate because based on your outside climate inside climate will be yeah, because inside climate will depend upon your open field condition right so what is open field environment that is very important apart from that it is very difficult difficult to control the temperature because temperature analysis is one of the very vital component in drying process so controlling the uh, as in conventional it is very 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 easy to control the temperature rise but in 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 solar it is very in greenhouse dye it is very difficult to control it because these are the temperature rise are the very vital factor as i told the the greenhouse dye two types natural uh, and natural means you can say passive solar dye so how it operates so basically direct absorption is, is uh, because due to two region uh, because in whenever you going for drying three phenomena occurs right it always the direct radiation you are getting maybe because on the surface we have put due to conduction also maybe conduction convection radiation Dep depend upon which type of dryer using all the three phenomena will occur but normally here you can say that the convection convection part is more predominant and solar part that because direct radiation is coming okay and uh, because the ready so in passive already we have discussed the uh, natural, natural ventilation and forced ventilation in the greenhouse case in earlier classes so the same phenomena because due to because the high due to high temperature you are not using any energy source to remove the your uh, humid air or hot air from the inside the dryer okay so this is natural phenomena what happens due to hot air density decreases go up, upwards and you put the ventilation on top so it hot your removes and it depends upon already we have discussed that what is the your wind speed outside okay so based on your temperature difference or maybe wind uh, natural in natural case we are not using any energy to move out the to take the air inside or taking the air outside from the your greenhouse dryer so this is the from the picture it is clear that the your this is a glass roof or maybe plastic film so here inside the temperature is very high and the cold air is going from the side and from the top your hot air exhaust air is uh, we can remove the hot air so this is the movement of uh, so here you are not using any energy source to move out the air from outside to inside or from inside to outside okay so this is your uh, from the picture it is clear that this is the your uh, passive solar dryer and same is the this is the normally uh, it apart from that you can put the chimney you can see that the the hot uh, after drying the hot air removed from the moist air outlet is there and hot air is passing through and chimney is there and the, as i told that due to the your high temperature density decreases and the, your hot air pass through the chimney so you can put the there are various types of design you can put in 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 your passive solar dryer our main purpose is that you want because what happens after after drying the moisture, moisture you can say relative humidity changes because inside the, because your air take the moist because the, after drying what what happens the your fresh produce uh, lose the moisture and that goes into the air so it, there is essential that we remove the humid air from inside to outside so that the, we can move move the inside the fresh air so that your drying rate will be faster okay so that is very essential so moving up the humid air from the outside to inside outside to uh, inside the dryer to outside is very essential in active uh, it is it is totally entirely different here basically we are using the blower of fan to move so it is but natural it will be faster than your natural convection and whenever the you have the high moisture food normally you go for force as i told that the temperature is important but rh is also important as i told because the when the produce lose the moisture it's uh, it, 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 it's humidity increases right so there is it is essential that we take out the 
less humid means the dry air from outside inside the uh, your drying chamber but in, in natural it uh, occurs as i told due to uh, what is the wind speed outside or due to your density difference of hot air but here uh, the drying rate will be much faster than your your uh, passive system so active drying is the more uh, more efficient you can say in comparison to your passive drying and this is the picture as i explained that the your uh, your uh, normal open open air will go from the side and we can remove by the exhaust fan or any fan to so basically want to speed up the uh, air removal from the inside the your drying chamber and this is the force convection greenhouse dryer in picture it is clear already i explained that the your air is going air, outside air is coming inside and then we are passing the uh, humid air from inside the chamber to outside okay so and then uh, as i told that the in passive active it can be of three types okay direct okay indirect or mixed type so uh, first we will discuss direct solar dryer in direct solar dryer what happens the your in the same chamber you are collecting the energy and drying the food product this is the basic things so basically conventional greenhouse greenhouse you have seen used for cultivation so same chamber you are using for collecting the energy and heating the uh, drying the food product so this is the your direct solar dryer it is clear that it is as i told that in the same chamber what is happening it is collecting the energy it is it is increasing the temperature of air and in the same chamber we are putting the food product to dehydrate okay so okay so this is the direct solar dryer uh, it is simpler and cheaper to construct because here there are only one chamber so cost will be uh, uh, lesser okay and the product quality better than open sun time certainly it is types of greenhouse dryer so means the because as i told there are various uh, advantages of greenhouse dryer so same advantages are uh, 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 will be valid here also okay and uh, there are various disadvantages are there means the capacity because here the same chamber you are using so normally in direct solar dryer the cap capacity is small and because here the direct solar radiation is coming to the food product sometimes depending on which type of food product you are talking discoloration is the it, it can be it can be problem in indirect solar dryer as i told here the two chambers are there drying chamber and solar collector so basically what happens the two chambers are there in solar collector we are collecting the energy means the in solar collector you, air will be heated and then that you will pass that heat air through the your uh, drying chamber and uh, as i told that due to convective heat transfer between hot air and wet crop that is one of the major phenomena due to that your your produce lose the moisture this is the picture you can see uh, here but one thing you have to take care that the normally you can see that the drying chamber is opaque right means the in indirect what I, what is happening you in, in indirect what is happening means the your drying chamber is in, inside the drying chamber no uh, that is not transparent means the greenhouse effect is not happening inside the drying chamber okay opaque means the uh, your uh, you, you, we are not collecting energy in, inside the drying chamber so what is happening first we are heating the air and that heated air is passed through your drying chamber okay this is the you can from picture you can see that first we heat the air and then pass through and then from the chimney and the various uh, way maybe it, it can be of active and passive type all the direct or indirect or mix it can be a both type active or passive type okay and there are ways that can be operated at higher temperature uh, normally for uh, you know that the that uh, you can classify the depending on which what is the thickness of your drying means the whenever you put the food product on the tray what is thickness so thin 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 layer drying or deep bed drying is deep bed means the your thickness of, of the produce you have put in the dryer uh, on the on on your tray or I, at on ground the thickness will be more in comparison to thin layer okay in thin layer what happens it is to all the food product is exposed to your uh, air, uh, air drying condition okay and it is more efficient than the direct solar dryer and the quality of product because here direct solar radiation is not coming so your quality of produce will be better than the your uh, direct direct so, uh, solar drying condition but it is more complex and expensive than the direct solar dryer and incur large maintenance certainly if you are if, if you have a dryer of the large capacity in mean in some time you have to go for maintenance cost also and as i told in mixed mod what happens here both the phenomena is occurring means the it is it it is the mixer of you can say means the 
uh, here the uh, drying chamber is also collecting energy and your solar collector is also energy uh, collecting the energy so what is happening here both the both the things are, so you can it is clear from picture you can see that here the the film is the transparent film okay so your drying chamber is also heated due to greenhouse effect and again your solar collector is uh, inside the solar collector also greenhouse effect is happening right so what is happening here the it is a mix of both means mix of your direct or indirect so both the phenomena of direct or indirect is happening here okay in the uh, your mix mode solar dry it is uh, it is more complex and expensive than a direct so certainly the depends depending upon the your your uh, uh, because the here the cost will be more right and the uh, UV radiation is can damage the food product. UV radiation can, can come in all the cases. So depending on which type of food product uh, you are drying, we have to select our uh, our dryer. Uh, as I already I have told, that in direct type also it it can be of uh, active and passive both. So you can see the from the picture uh, that the in direct type the in the same chamber means that there is no separate uh, uh, collection chamber of the solar energy so here in the same chamber in the same chamber collection and drying happens and it can be as i told that it can be active and passive both same is the indirect indirect type you can see that in indi indirect type it is opaque chamber uh, already i explained means the in, in in indirect type you are not collecting the energy inside the drying chamber okay basically you are heating the air from the your solar collector and then passing through the your drying chamber but in mix mode you can see from the picture it is clear that the your energy collected at the in drying chamber also and solar collector also okay and then the low cost multi purpose greenhouse what is the low cost multi purpose greenhouse you know that the already we have discussed that the greenhouse is the is the it is very fine technology especially for the, the the area where the temperature is very low but normally in jharkhand and and 90% of india you, you know that during summer season the outside air temperature is very high it go above the 30 at some above the 30 and average temperature will take the 90% of india it is more than 40 degree so what happens inside the your greenhouse temperature go between you can say 40 to 55 okay depending upon the location uh, where you have constructed the greenhouse so in summer as i told earlier also in earlier classes also the temperature is temperature and light intensity is also very high so for before going for cultivation during summer especially during summer season we have to reduce the temperature and reduce the light in intensity so that depending upon which type of crop you are talking we can cultivate the crop during summer season also so normally what we are doing in multi purpose greenhouse dryer uh, multi-purpose greenhouse what is happening multi-purpose greenhouse means basically the same structure here at the in in birsa agriculture university university at department of culture we are doing a lot of work on the multi-purpose greenhouse what why multi-purpose multi-purpose means apart from normally greenhouse if you see throughout the world you are using for your cultivation purpose or nursery raising right but what we are doing apart from cultivation nursery raising you are using the same structure same greenhouse for drying or soil solarization due to that we are given the name name of this greenhouse multi-purpose means apart from conventional use you are using for drying or maybe uh, soil solarization of the uh, soil solarization right so normally during winter or rainy season we suggest that you go for cultivation or nursery raising but during summer in in place to reduce the temperature and go for cultivation on nursery raising we are using the benefit of high temperature inside the greenhouse for drying or soil solarization purpose so due to that we used to say uh, while low cost already explained because this is locally uh, made from the locally available material uh, and the cost is uh, comparatively low in comparison to con conventional greenhouse so uh, here uh, what we suggest that between from mid February to June end we can use the same structure greenhouse for your uh, uh, drying or soil solarization and drying process can already I explained that it can be active or because, but here you can say the direct type because there is not separate chamber to collect your solar energy so you can say that is the direct type solar dryer here you can use the both active and passive system also okay because already i explained that active system will be more efficient so drying rate will be more faster okay so 
and here in the department as i told uh, uh, already one uh, mtech student uh, has worked under me and we have used that uh, greenhouse for drying up tomato uh, drying up tomato during summer season so it is clear from picture that on picture top you can see that the open field in open field dehydrated tomato is there without wb means without blanched tomato and 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 in right you can on top you can see open field dry tomato after blanching so you can see in the blanched tomato the color color is more uh, is preserved in better way and in 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 figure 20a you can see left side is the tomato dried in the multi purpose greenhouse without blanching and the right you can see that the the dehydrated tomato that was after blanching we go for uh, uh, drying what are advantages uh, if, uh, uh, as i told that apart from that your cultivation on a sea raging you are using the high temperature to take the advantage of the high temperature normally as i told it varies temperature vary between 40 to 55 sometimes more than 55 okay depending on his what is your size of a structure okay and uh, uh, there is youtube video is loaded you, you can see if you are interested to know more uh, uh, on the youtube uh, link is given here okay and the, here the i have given the comparison of your multi purpose greenhouse and conventional greenhouse there this is very important you can see that the you can a multi purpose greenhouse as i told you are using for drying and cultivation or nursery raising during winter rainy season we go for culti we suggest that during winter or rainy season you go for uh, nursery raising or cultivation but during summer in place to go for cultivation if you are interested to because in jharkhand you know a lot of farmers dehydrate the uh, you can say mahua or cauliflower cabbage or you can say so many things our farmers dry okay and then kept them and they used during rainy season okay so that was the thing in in our mind so in place to reduce the temperature and go for cultivation they can take the advantage of your high temperature inside the greenhouse during summer season and apart from that as i told that the cost construction cost is also around uh, rupees 3 uh, rupees 300 per square meter but conventional solar dryer you are going if you are constructing that cost between 400 to 600 rupees per square meter and economics is much better because your construction cost is also less and a, in normal greenhouse we do not go for drying throughout the year if you are going for throughout the year because it is very impossible depending upon your outside conditions so normally people are using solar dryer normally during summer in other season they are using the outside energy they are using extra energy source to heat the air okay because in winter depending upon which location you are talking outside temperature is if it is very low so you will not get the desired temperature inside the drying chamber and apart from that as i told it can be constructed locally and the because in nutritional security it will also help so it is our goal that the our farmers do those farmers who have constructed the low cost uh, natural vented greenhouse they can use the same structure to because now they are dehydrating in open open field okay in open environment I, as i told there are lot of challenges are there so if they will use the this the same greenhouse then eight and half month they will use for cultivation on a sea raging and same structure they can and apart from that if before the crop they they want suppose that for two month they are going for solar drying and one month before the next crop in rainy season they can go for soil solaration okay and uh, thank you very much for your kind attention i hope uh, uh, it is interesting uh, you have learned today's something new and if you have any question i will happy to you can contact me at the given address okay and thank you very much for your kind attention